like the the power of the two ofs is going to carry him through now obviously very very minor difference i am a one offs hater i always will be a one offs hater i do think felcane has a very very clean looking list here um he does have two bog beams in there which is not something that we talked about specifically just for a little bit of that extra anti-aggro technology but hey if you're rdu and you just get the fungal fortunes in your opening hand anyway why do you need a second one right perfect logic can't argue with it yep looks good to me I'm interested to how far he's going to go with this mulligan again because uh, Moonlit isn't a card you... Uh, I think it's a very flexible card just in general, but sometimes you can use it to try and fish for ramp or card draw early. Sometimes you can take the approach of, well, actually, if my opening hand feels good, I can use it later potentially to get like Omega value, whether it's with the Kaz treasures or just with good cards in your deck in general. Um, so very interested to see what he does just with this hand overall. I imagine the soul is going to go, but the other three I could definitely hear arguments for across the board. Mm -hmm. He is going to hold on to it, and I do think that that is a risk when you are facing down the the Glowfly-style deck on the other side as well, of course, as both players are playing. So we will see where this one goes to. Keeping an 8-drop with no ramp in a situation where Glowfly could end the game very rapidly, but RDU is in fact the first player to get hold of the Glowfly here, and now he does have that dream fungal fortunes into Glowfly curve available. It's huge, right? Not only not only that, but he has Bungle into Coin Glowfly Arbor up, right? Which is just sure. Yeah, I love that, by the way. Cold Tooth Mine for low, just to find the bloom. This is something else that I love doing in this mirror match when you do have the Glowfly version of the deck. Just get Glowfly out nice and early. Forget about finding those heavy drops. Of course, that's made more obvious in RDU situation because he already has the Kaz in hand. Yeah. So ramping for high is not that big of a deal. But honestly, I do very, very similar things uh, in this matchup, even when Kazakhstan is not in my hand. How do you now work out exactly where he wants to go here, right? Because he does have options. He could just get his own glow fly out now. He could slow play it and uh, just wait or try and draw some more cards, uh, even if that means burning. Because even burning cards right now for RDU isn't the end of the world, right? Because he has Kaz and he has glow fly and he has Arbor up, right? He has enough to basically win the game with just his hand right now. He says five two twos, and I'm okay with him saying five two twos. Seems reasonable here. Okay, however, has that beautiful scale response that I was talking about before, and he's going to dump a Lunar Eclipse alongside it in order to consolidate one extra 2-2 on the board. So that is already a huge tempo swing in his favor, and RDU, having bloomed out the Glowfly on the previous turn, is not going to have access to his own scale for a significant amount of time here. does have his own Lunar, though, if he really wants to uh, pull back, but I think he can wait because... Unless it's exactly Bloom Arbor up, which he might be afraid of. Like, he knows that the overload is there for Felcane. Mm -hmm. Who's to put out the Luna, though, and go for the Wild Growth instead? Going to start trying to ramp to his own scale, I imagine. With this hand, it has to be Arbor up, right? <laughs> If you wait, you lose the minions to try and Solar Arbor into anyway. If you just carefully position your hand over the very right-hand side of Felcane's collection of cards and ignore the fact that he drew Solar this turn, yeah, I think that was a guaranteed Arbor up. However, if RDU does anything that leaves these two 2-1s two in play this turn, Felcane then has Bloom Solar Arbor on the following turn. So I really think that top oh. deck of Solar potentially changed a lot in the decision-making here for Felcane. Line number two. Oh, well, RDU has real choices now. Mm. You can go for Guff this turn. You can go for Glowfly this turn, although it would be quite small. Because two of the minions obviously aren't, uh, aren't spells. Wow. Okay. Now what? 
<laughs> Elgain's deck is on a mission of confusion this game. Like, the plays seem so clean, and then a potentially better but one turn delayed line just keeps coming off the top. Honestly, I like it, right? The reason why I think this is so powerful here is you just saw your opponent um, do pouch for a zero last turn. So there's a good chance what they want to do is innovate or bloom Kazakas, right? And this is the best thing that you can possibly do to be able to shut that down because you'd win the game immediately if that play happens. Obviously, it's dangerous if your opponent is going to just straight up scale of Anixia you here. But I think the read that goes into your head when you see someone specifically pouch for a zero on that turn is that they're trying to get to eight next turn, not to seven. And then you consider the, the Kaz play more likely than this game. I think the reason Falcane... <laughs> Ooh! I was going to say, the reason the Falcane's fine with this is that he has scale, right? So even if this yes. happens, he plays scale, passes, and then he can still do an arbor up because it's unlikely RDU has back-to-back -back answers to boards that wide. Ooh, now we can big stretch fly again. Is it still just scale? Though? I think like, it's, it's just technically scale. one more minion. Yeah, and also it means that even if this is cleared. Still has the cheaper options the turn after, right? Yeah, exactly. Big grin on Falcane's face. Stuck on the water bottle. He's feeling good. He knows he's blocked the Kaz this turn. He's blocked most available plays that Druid would have here. You would need to already be deep into a Kazakhstan deck at this point to be able to answer this kind of situation. And even if RDU can answer this situation, which he can with the Cold Tooth Mine guaranteeing the seven drop, innovating out, there's still another wave of glow yeah. flies to come after this. Falcane just has all of the initiative this game, Raven. Find some initiative anywhere in the world. Falcane currently has it. And it means if he does get hold of, even if he drew Kaz there, he would be the first person to play Kaz, right? Which is absolutely true. true. So, you know what I mean? So even though RDU what kept it uh, in his mulligan, uh, Felcane would uh, has positioned himself in a way that even if he didn't need to play this Glowfly, he could play Kaz first. And then Ardu still has to spend a whole turn playing Kaz before he can even try and catch up. And Ardu's just out of answers, right? That was double scale he's used now? Yep. Minor point, but I like Falcane just kind of maxed out on two turn power by blooming out one arbor up that turn because now he perfectly curves into seven mana the next turn. Still has solar arbor available then as well, which he wouldn't have been able to all do in one turn. So this is maximum power over a couple of turns the way he's done it. And there's just nothing he can do is that I was quiet because I was staring at RDU's hand. But there's just nothing there. Falcane got hold of the board uh, enough and consistently enough to be able to just keep the pressure on no matter what the outcome. So great job for Falcane there, uh, getting that first win under his belt. And we did see the sort of clash of the token druid forms, right? Where it is all about those tokens. If you're the only way I think a lot of the time it gets to Kaz is if one's bloomed out super early or neither player gets hold of tokens, right? Like there's that they're the only two real ways. I, otherwise you're gonna see a lot of this style of the matchup where both players are hyper aggressively fighting for board. And a lot of the time whoever lands the first arbor up successfully on the board uh, yep. generally takes the victory, right? As soon as that board's safe enough to drop Arbor up, uh, you're feeling pretty good about life. It's the one thing that you do have to appreciate about Kazakhstan is that because everything happens so fast after it's played, you can forget how painfully slow it is to play in the first place, right? When you actually have to dump it on board. That's mitigated, of course, by the fact that Druid quite often have twice as much mana as you do when they do it, which makes it a little bit faster. But in a situation like that, when your opponent's just playing seven two twos every turn, there is no turn in the game where you can safely just play an eight mana yep. eight eight on the board. You see it a lot of the time in the uh, the Control Warrior that plays it, or Kaz Warrior, whatever you want to call it, uh, that because they don't have access to that ramp, 
a lot of the time they can be too pressured in multiple turns to actually even play it and then they get that in that sort of endless cycle of not having the time and we are going to be moving on to this miracle miracle priest though sorry i'll try and uh, say words better um and look again looking forward to uh, seeing this miracle priest because as we saw previously pretty crazy things can happen and the games can get very explosive indeed and it'll definitely be on fel Kane to try and uh, stop RD running away with this and I believe yeah Felcane is going to be going on this demon hunter and he has a uh, couple of spicy picks in there as well uh, most importantly this Zai the Incredible uh, in his hand uh, what do you think he's uh, in, the, in the deck sorry uh, what do you think of the the big gains from this card what do you think he's really looking for duplicating yeah I mean it, it's a weird one because I almost want to call Zai the Incredible a failed experiment from the Casey group, right? It, it popped up for one week and Casey and Bunny were like, no, this is better. You play Zai, like Zai's better. And then the next week, no one was never talking saw it about again. it. Yeah. It just never, ever happened again. Yeah. And this is really the first time I've seen uh, a build of the deck like this really come back into it. Of course, the direct answer to your question is just the key power cards, right? Like getting a second expendable so that you can use one freely and still have the win condition, getting a second Jace, all that kind of stuff. Um, but at the same time, you know, when I was learning to play with the original Zai version of the deck, we did find a lot of utility of just, well, these are some good cards in my outcast. It's more stuff. Right now. So, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get a little bit of value out of this Zai right now. Okay, well, starting off with the studies, first choice here for RDU. None of these smaller uh, dragons that sometimes you actually are looking for, depending on matchup. But there is a Kaz there. Based on the other two options, and they say it's tempting, so there is. Take it. I imagine next turn might look at and to look for a palm reading, whereas Falcon is just gonna do what demon hunters do, and draw cards. Yeah, Spectral on two is fine. Obviously, a little bit awkward oh, if you. Yeah. If you play it on two, then you're not going to complete your quest. You're only going to draw three cards. But if you wait one turn to weave the Viper in there, well, it's not in outcast position anymore, so it's only going to draw one card. So may as well just go ahead and rip it there on turn two. Need for Greed, however, is the exact opposite of everything I just said. Drawing Need for Greed on turn three on first stage of quest is the dream scenario. I grow impatient. Falcon going to cycle from the other side, though, instead. Interesting. Just going to triple cycle here. Done. Okay, sure. Reasonable. You know, for RDU, this is looking like a hand I would want if I was Miracle Priest, right? He has palm reading now. That'll corrupt the insight. The insight, yes, it can draw Maligos, but it could just draw the Nazmani. And then you mm -hmm. start to look at the rest. There's already a reduced uh, card I've already forgotten the name of because I'm stupid. A Gift of Luminance. There's already a okay. reduced one of those. Uh, there's a few zero cost cards which are huge to start getting your cycle going, especially when you can duplicate Nazmanis to get uh, early on. So it's ticking all the boxes for me so far, Sotl. Yep, it's very, very fair indeed. And do you think it's fair to say that RDU's pick of Kaz is very much still just a huge backup plan if things go terribly wrong it's not like he's going to try and play for kaz right yeah no i would imagine so i think ideally he'd like to get the primary thing done right of huge nasmani board play the malagos like he'd like yeah. to do that first before playing a kazakas but sometimes you don't have that luxury things don't always work out perfectly in this deck which is the the dynamic i was talking about earlier even though Felcane's kind of giving the nod right now of, well, this appears to be going perfectly for my opponent. Um, RDU is out of steam after this, more or less. Does pick up Onyx Mage Scribe, which is a very nice tool for uh, adding some extra juice to a hand that oh. is running dry like this. But right now, Cycle not really available. A tricky choice here, actually, because although palm reading is almost a, a insta-pick in all circumstances, the fact that he has zero mana power infusion and he could have played another zero mana card that's four reductions which then could have made something else playable right well four tens is the challenge with the divine shield 
Petrus Demons are only two attack at this point, so that is not particularly useful. Kill one. Good kill one. Hmm. That's not including the attack this turn as well, of course. We could yeah. juice them up to uh, three fours if you really wanted to. Problem is, this early in the game, that insight makes the world of difference. Yes. Because this doesn't normally happen turn four, and surely Demon Hunter, even in good outcomes, struggled to clear this board, right? I Two Divine Shields patient. and one of them being 10 health. It's a big ask. I mean, once again, I talked about it before, how this isn't really a tech card anymore. It's very core to the deck. How do you deal with this kind of stuff? Magtheridon. That's basically right. it. That's the only way you have. And you start to see, as I say the word Magtheridon more and more and more over the course of a, a very short broadcast so far, why that card has become so core to uh, Demon Hunter decks in these kind of situations. Really wants to hit some discounts on that Mage Scribe right now, I think. Not quite lining up. Yeah, things always get tricky as well, and again, it's something you pick up the more you sit and pilot the deck. A card such as Powered Ooh. Fortitude, right? Of like, yes, right. it's zero now, but you don't want to start it a lot of the time, and then things get very strange very quickly. And speaking of which, are you just deciding, yeah, this isn't good enough. I'm going to just play cards instead. Go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I think is very fair. Starts off with knife. Yeah, holy book looks good to me. Holy book or is it Anoyo? Ends up taking I think, Anoyo. I just think Anoyo's much more clearable than a ten ten is. It is. Yeah, no, I agree. So, Again, specifically Demon Hunter, obviously. Yes. Look at the dead's nice. I don't know whether he picked the deal damage for his face, because again, versus this deck seems pretty good. Well, well, well. Okay, it's missing some spell fine damage. Mess. Just missing mana. Why? Like, look at the difference. It's like it's like how to use kind of druid, right? He's on five mana. He's got this board, uh, and then he does have treasures in the deck. And yeah, then, I mean, he's already he's already cheated like thirty mana this game, yeah. right? And like, Falcon's <laughs> like, oh, I'm gonna glide for three, and now I've got. Let me check. Three mana. Hmm. Hey, what can I do? The answer is not a lot. The answer does appear to be lose. Keep digging for Mag. Okay, he's found it. That's what this was all about. That's why he threw away a, a, a handful of fairly useful utility cards. Just did right. nothing in this situation. Threw it away to look specifically for Magtheridon, I'm sure. Now pushing as much damage as he can to the face, maybe? No, he is going to challenge the AT. Okay, that's fine. Wondering whether face might have been an option there just to reduce the amount of time and turns that he needs to have the Magtheridon stick after the clear, right, to actually be able to end the game on the race. Yeah. I don't think the trade matters too much because, again, the trade kind of ma would matter because of what the hero power is for Falcane, but it's not going to matter enough. Not on seven mana, not on the sort of restrictions that Falcane has right now. So I do like some damage going face. I think RDU, although he's working off these very powerful treasures, uh, does want to just get this game over with very quickly now. I mean, you probably yes. play that, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's just two legendary soul. They just sh 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 uh, surely that's the right pick. <laughs> okay, he is just going to drop the Magtheridon. Fair enough. Oh, this could be pretty smart as well, right? This reduces the power of a lot of the treasures. Is like Specifically the, uh, like Locust kind of thing? Uh, Locust, the uh, the Anoyo board, and you know, just yeah, things sure. like that, right? Because there's just not the space and there's nothing that these minions can trade into that would help unless their RDU has a Devour, I guess. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. 
And if you want to make space, you've got to trade the one threes that then pops the Magtheridon. So. Yeah, 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 of course. I think, you know, doing it this way allows him to then use Zai to copy the Immolation Aura as well, right? Yeah. Which gives him a guaranteed clear if he wants it. I was just wondering whether a second Magtheridon and a second Jace to be able to clear might just be something that Felcane was interested in. I suppose if you start getting into CAS boards, though, reverse engineering what you were just talking about, they play Locus or a Noyo Horn, and you can't Magtherod on that board anyway, right? Because it's full and you can't spawn your tokens on the other side anyway. So perhaps the second mag might have been useless at this point. All right, Arcanist is a pretty good pickup. He would need a dumpable card there to do the thing I was talking about on the previous turn of copying the uh, the Immolation Aura anyway. But if it's just going to be Talented Arcanist, hey, no need. We can just copy Fury and Jace instead and just set up a win condition. Yeah, I mean, that starts to stack up to a lot of damage, right? Mm-hmm. Suddenly. Great, is it? Are you reading treasures for the first time? <laughs> Like Pavel with the rogue secret. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, one of my very favorite Hearthstone casting memories. We're just rinsing Pavel for not even knowing that Rogue had secrets, and he could hear us the entire time and just yep. looks up and just nods at us. Like, yep, no, you're right. <laughs> with just the smallest of smirks that you. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. Would just be a. It's a little bit annoying because it's a turn too early, if you know what I mean, for the Fiori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I like just stacking the Fiori's and press Jace, go. We know there's Immolation Aura in there. We know there's a few other bits and bobs. And Falcon just gets to just push a lot of damage. Fury goes back. House Strike at least once. There's another Fury to come, which is 14. But I don't believe there's been anything else played. No, there you go. That is it. Those so studies and bobs were non-existent, Raven. Oh, here, even to help him out if he's worried about this eight damage. Or does he just go face and say, you know what? If you've got something, you've got something. Oh, he's going face, I think. Every single yeah. time. That's what I mean, right? He just has to, right? Yep. He knows there's a book left. Knows right? there's book. Yep. Well, six Divine Shield taunts seem vaguely useful in this situation. Read and just trade, right? Do you, do you think oh, just seven Divine Shield taunts? Yeah, I was going to say, I think just trade play it because then I feel like this is more... <laughs> I feel like this is more, how do I realistically lose? Whereas maybe there's a tiny increase <laughs> in your loss chance. <laughs> oh, Falcon, I've missed you. All right, so Fel Barrage opens up a target for Chaos Leech, for sure. It's a bad target because you're going to hit a 1-2, which is pretty disappointing. Actually, no, it doesn't. That You could technically just hit a Divine Shield, then kill that same minion with each Fel Barrage, right? Which would be annoying. Hence the name of the board. Yes. Astutely observed, sir. The answer is here. The Jace doesn't do enough. It just has Furies, Chaos Strikes, and one Immolation Aura in it, so that's yeah. not going to make a dent. Could throw in a Fel Barrage, hit some Divine Shields. Then, if you hit two Divine Shields with the Fel Barrage, then the Immolation Aura would clear up the Anoyos. And then he'd need okay. the Fel Barrage to go again afterwards, and it would then potentially be able to take care of some of the three fours instead. But it's just, even in the world where you're super optimistic that everything happens in the perfect order, it's just not good enough. So yeah, I think Falcane just has to set up here. Yeah, it does make his second Jace much stronger as well, because then it'll contain those more, uh, the two more fell barrages, right? Yep. And the, uh, the leech as well, of course. Just needs a good order, though, right? I think that's going to be very important yep. for Falcane. Is the ordering of the Jace is going to be absolutely huge. But for now, RDU. You need to play Mage Scribe and then Knife. On the Mage Scribe specifically, or do you want to cash out some of the healing now? 
think I like it on the Maze Scribe. Okay. Because RDU will have a good knowledge of what that last card is. Right? He's seen one Jace and he's seen the Zai. You know, yeah, he knows. He knows so, exactly. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, so he knows what it is. So just make a, a big sort of awkward minion as well as your big awkward board, right? I can see that. The extra health could be very useful. <laughs> oh, and Desperate you. prayer, Apo! Oh, if ever you needed some help staying alive, there you go. And although this is an extreme example to what I was talking about earlier, these are the kind of games you get into as priests. So like, maybe not as extreme as like a very early Kaz and then get it out relatively early as well. But um, still, these are some of the, the more creative style of games where it's not all just, you make a Nasmani, it gets big, you win the game. Like, that's definitely a portion of them, but a lot of these games get trickier because if you just made a Nasmani big and you auto won, it would be the best deck in the game. <laughs> So close. Eight damage short, which minus the Desperate Prayer, he would have found himself three damage short in that situation. Obviously able to attack through because much like immune minions, stealth minions cannot taunt. Um, but now, of course, that is going to be the end of the game. You have to imagine. I don't know about that, Sol. I can see the taunt shield on that stealth minion. <laughs> <laughs> like it's got taunt to me. Notice I didn't say can't have taunt. I said couldn't taunt, which you know would refer to the active action of doing what taunt does, which is a thing that they can't do. Let's see, I feel it's like very it's... semantically precise that time. I feel like this card is very actively taunting Felcane right now because it's wise <laughs> in the game. So uh... I feel like you're very actively taunting me. Is what's happening? <laughs> Uno reverse. How about that? I'm not a card draw here for Felcane, but what can he realistically do? What's there even in the deck left that's going to have an impact? Because this just looks like a lot of card draw and no expendable performers right now. Yeah. That's what he needed. And now on this mana, there is... Nothing? has four damage from Fury. Like, all he has to do is kill it. If he, even if he has to kill it with his face, that's fine. He'll absolutely take that, right? Like, that's all he has to do. He has four damage from the Fury. He has six of the Chaos Strike, eight with the Hero Power, but at Draki Warblades? Yeah, he draws it now, but you yeah, can he, see, like, how does he get to that with enough mana remaining yeah, he, to be able to do all that at that point? He needed to draw it way earlier, right? Yeah. No, wait. Very unfortunate in the end. Came down to the wire for the last few moments, but RDU just getting off to a very, very rapid start. Did go about it a little bit unconventional. A uh, couple of the discover choices, I was kind of questioning in the middle there when he was popping off with the Nazmanis, uh, but went with the Kazakhstan plan, which was pretty consistent in the end of being able to get there, make big minions. But I do think Felcane is uh, is is playing with his brain switched on today. I think he's he's thinking about the outs. He's making smart decisions. He's in this game in particular, put he had his back put up against the wall and he's really, you know, fighting back appropriately because he's, you know, finding those outs and playing towards them, even though they're very, very unlikely. <laughs> and uh, thank you for that well-timed dramatic zoom. Uh, but in the end, just the, the oppression of the treasures was just way too much to, for uh, Falcane to be able to cope with. Yeah, it's definitely a tough one, even though it looked close so many times, right? And even RDU simply going for the Kaz was... I don't want to say a brave choice because I don't mean it like that, but you know, not a choice he had to make as well, right? He still had options going forward. Uh, maybe we could have held off for a few more draws, but it definitely paid off and he did just push Felcane out. And that's one of the, the drawbacks of this Demon Hunter is it feels very predictable 
right? Like, you know that they want to do very specific things, that you know they want to be able to swing the hero and, and hit you in the face with it. And um, and if you can just put layers of taunts in the way, you just neuter so much of the potential damage that that deck's capable of. But from one Demon Hunter to another Sotl, we are going to be jumping over to RDU on the Brute Demon Hunter, uh, a deck we saw uh, Blyze do pretty well with, but now it's uh, RDU's turn. And I believe it is the same deck as Blyze, right? It looks like an identical build. Yeah, I'm not spotting any differences. The Royal Librarian is in there. The Razorglaive Sentinel are in there. Uh, everything else looks fairly standard towards the way this would work anyway. Uh, did Blight have the one broom, actually? That's probably the only question I, I have. I believe he did, but you know what? Give me about five seconds and I'll check. I am on it. He did have the one broom as well, yeah. This is an identical list as far as I can see, with one Acrobatics being the card. Uh, that is making way for some of these other tech choices coming in instead. So Brute Demon Hunter showing up in Europe with a force so far. Uh, very impressive performance from Blyze with it so far. It looked like a game he was significantly behind in, but managed to scramble through that Kurtris turn and really start popping off, even after getting it uh, glidden away earlier on in perfect timing by Frenetic to be able to come back for a decent showing. But we've been here once before, Raven, where Blyze was the only person who could win with Brutes on the face of the planet. So now it's up to RDU to prove that that isn't the case again. Yeah, and once again, we also see Mazaki Mage on one side of this board. Uh, a, a deck that we talked a lot about earlier can whiff just a little bit, but uh, we did see Falcane, even when it looked like the decks were struggling because the Mazaki itself was uh, uh, gobbled up by Mutiners. He's still- Frenetic, you work. mean, sorry. Frenetic. Did I say mean. Frenetic? You said Falcane. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, frenetic earlier, uh, but he, he did make it work because, again, the deck does have the ability to generate and just burst a lot of damage. So we'll see. I have to see how this one plays out. <laughs> Early Mazaki in hand after the mulligan for Felcane, but a good start as well, just having the um, the flow already there. Again, just the, the good old EBM soul flows no matter what the mana cost. New year, new season, new week, new players, new format, new length. Same old mage games. Welcome to Europe, baby. Let's go. Okay, and keep it simple. Doesn't have coins, so we'll still have a little bit of a while. You have to wait till he can get that Encanter's flow out. How do you, though, with double Spirit Jailer in the open hand and an Acrobatics? Isn't such a bad start either. You know, maybe not the best start in the world, but getting those uh, fragments in the deck early isn't too bad either. Right. Could have a nice free turn to be able to pop this flow on the following turn, though. Demon Hunter not really going to put on massive pressure here unless it was the world's earliest brute turn. It is possible. We've all seen the screenshots of uh, three, four brutes on turn three or four. But in this case, not going to be happening here for RDU. And Felcane is going to get his free turn. Drop that flow. Even with the... Reduction. Not much for RDU to follow up with here, and probably doesn't need to follow up with anything. As you mentioned, it's against Mazaki Mage. Is a, you know, they do have to get cooking themselves, but I think any cards that RDU played last turn then would be wasted compared to what he can make of this turn, right? He can utilize this way better now to progress that quest. things off with the Viper. There is that broom interrupting the draw steps a little bit. RDU can try and keep going here with the double jump if he would like to, or he could just take a straight glide in this position. Could also uh, use the coin to get an outcast glide here if he really wants to, but he has just seen his opponent play uh, Encanter's Flow at this point, so all of the full cost cards existent in his deck are currently in his hand right now, so that's probably a weaker idea. He's going to go for it, though, by the looks of things. Oh, okay. I was going to say I wouldn't have even just hated it and regular glide, right? Or a <laughs> non-outcast glide, I guess, is the, is the phrase. Um, but yeah, it does choose to glide away Falcane's hand as well. It does mean Mazaki goes away, at least for now. Mm -hmm. Gets the, the boots. Not playable, though, which is pretty painful, isn't it? 
it is. That is a big, big deal, especially with that philosophy costing zero. That is such a difference. It's just 14, 16 of stats that have just vanished from the board <laughs> yeah. this turn. Elkane's, the, the glide actually worked out pretty badly for Felkane as well. Did. So that's something, obviously, RDU doesn't, well, maybe has an inkling of that now. But, you know, that's pretty rough. The cram session, not the card draw you want to play before Mazaki. And even if he did want to play it, you want to play with at least some spell damage on board. Nice. Chain the card draw. He needs card draw more efficient than that, though. Spectral Sight. There it is. And there's the soul fragments, which means these brutes are coming down for zero this turn. Boom, bap. There is that 14, 16 of stats he was missing on the previous turn. Yeah, really nice. Uh, I'll say recovery. It's not like I you did anything wrong last turn, but, you know, it could have been better. Uh, but having the brutes now, and then even worst case, where these are frozen, killed somehow, whatever, he's got insta Kurtris to follow up with. It's starting to get ugly for Falcane. The one turn where he was stalled out, not the end of the world because his start was so smooth with the flow. The second turn now where he's not really doing anything to progress his win condition, this is where he's going to start to get into trouble. Just one brain freeze, rationing out the damage here. Willing to take seven on this turn to preserve a flurry for future turns. Yeah, this means, because he'll expect okay. Kurtris, right? So the, the, he has the freeze to be able to stall out the whole turn. Does get okay. the spring water, but hits Mazaki, which is both good and bad at the same time, I suppose. I mean, he has Mazaki, Biscuit, Siphon, Mana, Cram Session in hand. Yeah. Like, it's a pretty decent starting point for the following turn. And he's probably going to be put under enough pressure here if he does not just straight up die that he's just going to have to go for it. Ooh, can glide, right? This is so big because he saw that the spring water didn't go off. So he knows Volcane has a minion in hand. Mm -hmm. And with RDU's hand and his strength on board, is there much of a reason not to glide? Uh, well, he's already playing a ton of cards this turn, and he probably wants to bank that damage into his Lion's Frenzy, or at least part of him does, would be the reason. That's annoying, though. Now it might just be a glide. Pleasure doing business. Nope, he's going to keep going. Get that Brute discounted. Runner as well. Not able to be... Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's useful. That's just simply a lot of damage. Okay. All right, let's go. Yep, no surprise whatsoever. Under too much pressure, can't stall out any longer. He just has to go. But the cramp session that was stuck in his hand for, since pretty much the beginning of the game is going to come in clutch right now, and it absolutely needs to. Wildfire is nice, just in the sense that it's cheap. Yeah, he has to keep an eye on that Cypher mana as well, right? Anything have six health? Uh, that was on five. He could have done it, and I think that was the pause for debate there as to whether he wanted to shoot the 7-5, get the discounts, or whether he wants it to go face for lethal, and I think face for lethal is the correct decision in this spot, but the card draw off the cram session has just absolutely not been there. Seven on Kurtris now, though, so he's going to switch it up, get cheaper yep. card draw and some more zero-cost spells in hand. Oh. Another siphon. No hot streak, no anything else to be able to keep on juicing that. No, you know, hot streak, fire sale with mana biscuits or anything like that, even to be able to clear the board. Because remember, RDU had cashed so much damage out at that point, just getting those brutes into play. Every card you draw from your deck is essentially damage that you then can't do uh, with the Lion's Frenzy. That even if the board had been clear, Felke might have had dreams at least of maybe using ice barriers or something to keep himself alive. But because RDU still had multiple tradable 
Fireball minions and Glides still available to himself, I think he would have been able to recycle the same five or six cards over and over again in his deck um, to be able to get over the line regardless. But first things first, Falcon was trying to kill him. Second things first, kill the board afterwards. Third things first, we can talk about trying to survive the fatigue damage. I don't know how many different things you can put first before it becomes absolute nonsense, but we're going with it. All I know is now I'm confused. So uh, reeling this back in, RDU now only has his Druid left over. Again, it is that sort of to the token Kaz Druid. And it, we're at that point one more time, Sol, where Druid just needs to get a win. And I feel like it is very, very doable when you have multiple goes at it, right? Uh, Defelcane has the Demon Hunter Mage left over. And once more, it just feels like an uphill climb because I wouldn't like to be in any series where my opponent has to win once with Druid, right? Because even in the unfavored, I think we were talking about this in practice the other day, even if you push an aggro deck against a Druid, which has historically been strong, Druid's at the point right now where it's hit like peak ramp ability, as well as like peak end game ability or payoff for the ramp in that any given game, there can be an early guff and then the game just ends or just a well-timed glow fly and the aggro deck or whatever just gets overwhelmed by the glow fly in itself. So a little bit scary now for Falcon as we dive into game number four. RDU only needs this one win to move on to tomorrow. Yeah, but remember, we have talked about this. RDU is now going to have to play a couple of the matchups where the token-focused version of the deck perhaps have a little less utility, right? Because Glowfly comes down, Fire Sail, delete your board, right? That I mean, it's a rare card. It's a, it's a two of in the deck, and there's nothing else in the deck that can really deal with it. Um, but those Moon Touch and Feral Rages and so on really buy a yeah. lot of time against Mazaki Mage um, to allow you to do your thing. Similar deal against the uh, Demon Hunter on the other side as well. Um, you know, Glowfly, boom, Immolation Aura, clear it up. Um, that kind of deal. And again, it's a deck that's trying to burst you down with significant amounts of damage. So, you know, there are windows that Falcon can try and exploit here, but first things first, for sure, this time, he is going to need an EU flow coming into this turn in the, <laughs> in, in, in the, in the near future, or is, he is going to be checked out of this series, I would imagine. Yeah, he's got one more turn to draw it, Sol. Yep. I do enjoy the progression of us tracking EU flows based on like, oh, well, it pretty much needs to be in the opening hand or that first turn. And then it was, oh, what about one more turn? And now well, then they kept nerfing it. So yeah. you have more turns to draw further. it. <laughs> That's not our fault. That's just the turn when it's on curve. Just funny. Ooh. You see the almost look of shock and resignation on the <laughs> European Grandmaster's face as they do not draw flow on curve. Yep. RDU just going for Kaz nice and early again. Uh, probably just off the back of what you said, right? Glowfly gets played, which is still a reasonable turn. But then if Fire Sail comes out, especially when Felcane's been floating so much mana, uh, then you end up playing Kaz just a turn late got to be embers right it's only on six mana but you'll get there willy hyper blaster and start pushing the one <laughs> <laughs> sounds good <laughs> the scenario mode's going to help him just uh push forward a little bit as well right unless the eight drops really bad yeah you would imagine so all right pure gold short. Eyeglass to uh, scout out if Mazak is there. Uh, Take Book of the Dead sure. and then play Glowfly. And then play Glowfly. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose since you have Glowfly yeah. in your hand, it's probably fine. Yeah, I was about to say it's one of the worst Book of the Deads I've ever seen, and Book is usually insane, but yeah, he has Glowfly in hand, so that does make sense. Again, refreshing spring water does not hit for Felcain. Yeah, and with this one being much earlier than the previous game, it's not as if even grabbing Mazak is good at this moment in time, right? Yep. Uh, still needs reduction. Does have the Mana Biscuit ready to go on the left side of his hand there. Does have a flurry to buy some time. But RDU is simply piling on the pressure right now. Really interesting to see how he uses these uh, Moonlits as well, because... 
as we've talked to each other a lot about Druid, uh, double Moonlit uh, Guidance after Kaza uh, uh, Kaz is absolutely insane. You have to just basically cherry pick which treasures you want to draw is huge. Yup. Hello. Yeah, the, the fact that you only have five unique cards in your deck and, you know, Moonlit is going to show you three unique options, it's insane. Like, you, you generally just get so much power over what you've picked up from your deck at that point that it's it's an it's the number one reason why this is the most cause, uh, common Kaz deck by far is that the natural Druid cards just synergize so beautifully with what you put in your deck with treasures, right? The Solar Eclipse obviously is insane, but even just Fungal Fortunes, uh, Moonlit Guidance, Cold Tooth Mine, all of those cards just enabling ramp you to pick general. up. in general. Yeah, I mean, Ramp <laughs> yeah. in general is also a colossal factor. You are absolutely right. Tyrion, not the biggest deal, but again, just the extra armor. Just make sure that Falcane can't try and sneak some kind of damage win, right? It just helps against that. Like, maybe uh, there's a way that he could, with Freeze's two-turn push, some damage. But, yeah, I think this is going to be a bit more than an uphill climb. Cypher Mana going to come down. Reduce a lot of the cards down, but it's just... Doesn't feel low enough. The flow coming out pretty late here from Falcane. Late in the game, I mean. Make him have to pull something pretty big out of the bag. Looking for Brain Freeze for zero here, since he has the flow discount. Or right. flurry, flurry number two, right? Because he's flurry number two. First yeah. one, yeah. Back Flurry just uh, cracks the two 10 attack minions there anyway, then oh. that is a big deal. But that is Solar Pure Cold, and that is why you pick Pure Cold every yep. single damn time. So cheap, so efficient, so much damage. RDU picks up the win in his debut game for the debut season of Grandmasters in 2022. He is back on his grind. Um, again, even more focused on Battlegrounds, admittedly so himself. I heard him talking about this on stream that, you know, now Battlegrounds actually has a competitive circuit. He is more focused on that than ever. But still, just goes to show you what, you know, natural talent and a legacy of hard work building up Hearthstone knowledge can bring you, uh, bring to you as you rely on it over time. And also now we've just seen, right, two very similar lineups, uh, not identical, but close enough, uh, making it through, right, in the first two matches of the day. Yeah. So uh, pretty impressive overall. I think the only real difference in these lineups between Ardu and Blyze is the t choice of Druid build, but still the overall Druid plan is kind of the same. So yeah, we're really strong. And, and maybe we are getting to that point finally, Subtle, where we can start saying like, yes, this is a, you know, an overall decent lineup as opposed to, I'll be honest, at least for me, kind of guessing at times because the lineups are in this mini meta in right now has been, have been so varied. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but it's kind of what you would expect at the start of a mini set, right? Is that there would be a lot of experimentation early on, a lot of disagreement early on, then things uh, trend towards a medium. Yeah. Uh, and then after that point, people then try and exploit that common strategy, right? As you then get deeper into it. So generally you do progress towards a point where people generally agree on what the best strategies are. And then you start to get into the position of like Yala's playoffs lineup with 25 sticky fingers in it. Like that kind of thing is when that comes into play uh, oh, 